Hey everybody, I'm Crow. Welcome back to Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. What we're going to do first is use the Soul of the Pursuer. Because I don't actually want anything that the Pursuer has. I think I'm actually going to turn the volume back up a little. I turned it down because it seemed like it was a lot louder than me. I think we could use at least one. We'll see. Anyway, now that we've used that, the next thing that I want to do before we start spending the rest of our souls is to come over here and get one of my favorite rings. It allows us to do many things involving falling. Little mini Alvina lady, where you at? Oh, I'm dead, are we? And one without much time remaining. Just about ready to fall apart, I'd say. Not exactly the time to be chatting with a cat. <laughs> She's fuzzy. Well, suit yourself. Oh yes, you may call me Shalqua. Enchante. So, what did you want anyway? Ooh, you smell wonderful. <laughs> I didn't actually remember her name was Shalcor. I never looked up there. And I probably only listened to her dialogue like the first time. If you wanted to do summoning stuff with your friends, the name engraved ring was the best way to do that because if you both put the same sign on, you could teleport to each other. And it even made the gap bigger for teleporting over. This is the ring for tanking stuff. The ring of voices, or ring of whispers. You can hear the voices of foes. This can get us a fragrant branch of yore and stuff later. Maybe we should pick that up, just cause. Silver cat ring, I love. Ring of evil eyes, kinda neat. It's only 5,800. If anything, we can come back and get it. Oh, you saw alluring skulls and stuff too. I didn't know that. Satisfied. I'll be around. Yep. Okay, but now that we have this ring, this will be one of the rings we seldom take off. Cat ring can go down here. I think the other ring that I put on is usually the silver serpent ring, and then... Oh, we... Right, because we beat the pursuer, we actually have a ring of blades. Yeah, that, that's supposed to add 20 damage. Huh. That'll actually work for our bows, because it's physical attack. And life ring. I forgot we had those actually. So we've got more health now. And our arrows should do more damage. With this, we can go inside the house. Blood stains. Did you get killed by the little piggies on the side of the house? And we walk around here. And right over here, there's a Pharaoh's Lockstone. Which replaces the one that we spent 4,000 souls on before. I think I'm probably going to end up using that in No Man's Wharf, because we have a bow, and I need as far of a range as I can get, and I don't really want to be rolling backwards and shooting those things the whole time. We will go down into the basement, but real quick, we're going to come up here and get stuff. This is a chest, and it has titanite in it. In it. Three titanite shards, and a torch, or three actually. These are the infamous pigs on the side of the house. They're so small that not a lot of weapons can hit them. So they have actually killed people before. They can be a nuisance if you let them gang up on you. The unassuming little pigs. And last but not least, we have the skeleton in the basement. This is where Kale hangs out. It's a big map of the whole area. Unfortunately, piercing is not very good against skeletons. Yeah. Interrupted. This is the most important part. He has to walk all the way around, so we get a good chance to roll in there again. And they always drop human effigies, if I remember correctly. Now, it actually looks like... That's just flash shard. This is a broken Lord Vessel. At least people kind of compared them, and that's what I've heard. This should be one of those stat reroller things. I think. Soul Vessel, yep. That'll let you reallocate every point you've ever spent. It's their way of having a 
respect tree thing, basically. They're pretty useful. We're definitely going to be using them because we're probably going to be using the bow of want at some point and move around with other stuff. I looked it up again. There's not actually very many bows in this game, now that I think about it. So we're probably going to end up upgrading our bow right now. Because I was like, oh, we should save the large titanite for a better bow. But the only other bows we could really get are the sea bow, which I love, but it's ultra rare. And the longbow, which is far enough away to the point where I think we should just use this. So if we reinforce our weapon, we can now... Or, reinforce our weapon... We can now have a plus four bow of doing even more damage. Take six of each thing to get to the next level, and then one Titanite Slab to finish it off. We will then fill up on the arrows, and the rest can be used on level ups. We're going to come back over here. And we're going to use our fla uh, SS Flash shards, because we should have two. Which will be a big help to us. I don't think we have any Sublime Bone Dust. I'll have to check in a moment. But we are free to level up now. And if I could have anything right now, it would be more adaptability. So we're going to get our adaptability to 25. We're probably going to get that, if not 240, close to 40. And then start putting points everywhere else where it's useful. I feel like it's probably the best stat in this game. You just need enough to be able to use your weapons competently. And then get the rest in iframes and stuff. It'd probably be more useful than endurance or health at this pro at this point. We do not. Okay. So because we don't have those and this stuff's all checked out now, I don't really have anything to do over at the Armorsmith person. So we can start heading to Hades Tower of Flame. Which should actually be a pain in the butt because they're pretty heavily armored. In fact, I don't know that there's any human part in them. They might be entirely armor. So we run through here. And we get to a little sewery area. There's a shield right here that we're going to get. That we're never going to use. But it's a chest and I'm opening it, damn it. Crimson Parma. Pull the lever. Shouldn't be any enemies in here immediately, but when we get out on the other side, there are going to be quite a few night friends. Do not play nicely. Soul of the Lost Undead, Broken Thief Sword. Open area ahead. Mm hmm. I don't remember if the Hade Knights were made hostile in this version. They put a lot more of them here. Don't you dare. Yeah, they say not to attack them. I recommend not attacking them. Guys, are pains in the butt. This guy will actually follow you all the way down here. We are going to light this regardless, though. And it looks like we actually had time to sit down. So these guys, the big guys here, are basically just going to be in our way until we can get over there. And you can actually see the Dragon Rider. Which I think is pretty neat. We're going to raise up the platforms. I've never been able to reliably do that whole drop him into the water thing. So we're going to fight him. Oh, you actually take more damage than I remembered. And your wide sweeps aren't really helping you. Mm, no. Are you going to walk off? They have a tendency to do that. Aww. I always think it's funny when you can get them to do that. It's not too terribly hard, but it can be risky. Sometimes when you bait them, you end up going off yourself. Pale stones! I think that's for removing enchantments on weapons. I like the way the upgrade system works in this game, too. It goes to plus 10, which is nice, instead of 15. Everything upgrades with the same resources, and you can just switch enchantments. So you don't have to completely get a new weapon, basically. Because before, if you had a Fire Zweihander plus 10 and you wanted to make it a Lightning one, you had to, like, completely unmake it and then get different materials. Now you can just, like, casually switch them about. I'm gonna hit. But we will roll through the last one. And get our... 
Oh, you don't have it. Was it on the ground? They at least used to have... That one used to be the one that dropped it, and then they didn't respawn. Uh, Sublime Bone Dust? There's definitely one in this area. Hey, come on, Bob. Yeah, I didn't want to shoot again immediately. He wouldn't get us if we did that. Stairs are your friend. It makes it very hard for him to hit you. But not impossible. Like how have we had to roll through that? Unfortunately, enemies will put up their shield when they try and walk away. Game developers. Preventing us from cheese. You gonna walk off? Oh, you're just gonna let me walk around you? I don't feel like most of those hit the shield, but alright. Come on, buddy. Keep swinging. Lloyd's Talisman. By killing him, this lever comes up. And you pull it. And if you look over yonder... You can see this platform rise up. There's a second one to rise up, too. I don't think you can hit Dragon Knight from here. I've never tried shooting Dragon Rider. Can you kill him from here? He's wincing like I'm hitting him. That would be funny. I've never tried that. But since I don't have a health bar display, I'm not going to try it just yet. This one should have less health because he does a lot more damage. And he also can't block. When he dies, the other two come out. Yeah, I didn't think you were going to get to me. Break blue eye orb. However, killing them raises that lever over there on the right. If I had a mace, the mace is like the best early game weapon there is, by far. The bludgeoning damage just completely ignores armor. You know, I don't think I need to fight you guys. Yeah, in fact, I mean not to. So you do this, you can run and jump off to land down there by that chest. That is the thing that you can do. We are not doing that today, and we will be going over that way next. But also not a thing we're doing immediately. Soapstones, people still want to be summoned. Glad to see there's still a bunch of people playing it. Eh. Ordinarily, I would just run past this person. In fact, I think we're going to do that. Because he can't fit through here. So let's just go through here first. Dragon Rider took damage. We could actually kill Dragon Rider from full health without ever coming into his arena. I think. That's amazing. I'm going to have to do that next time. That, that would... I can't believe they let you do that. With all three of the platforms up, it's really safe fighting him. Unless you fall out those big slides over there. The slots over here. Behind me now. There's no other real threat other than the Dragon Rider himself. And since he's potentially the first boss, unless you count the last giant, it depends on what direction you go. He's pretty easy to dodge most of the time. He's pretty warm uppy. And if I remember right, doesn't give a lot of souls. Loop. The other person in this area will give a lot more. However, with a 25 adaptability, it's even easier to dodge them. I'm not saying we won't get hit, because we probably will at some point. But, as you can see, I'm not doing this perfectly, and he's still not hitting us. That's what adaptability does, though. As long as you, like, roll not immediately as it starts... See, look, we kind of got hit partially there. Then you're good to go. And it didn't stagger us, even though we have no poise. Actually, I guess we have a tiny bit because of adaptability, but that, that's basically negligible. It's like one hit's worth. 
We have like two poise or something. Nope. And this is basically how the first few bosses should go. Or at least those first three. The next one we're gonna fight... I don't know about that. Whoa! That was not the side with the stairs on it. So we come up here and we hit the bonfire, and we find we find this really evil lady. And we rest. Returning all of the enemies back to the previous area, but then we can go back for chests and stuff and work our way up to the big keep up there. Are you from these parts? My name is Lysia. I have come to spread the art of miracles, a practice of which I am a disciple. I can see that you are well suited to comprehend their wondrous power. But the cost of it, that's for your heart to decide. Yeah. We're going to have words with her later. But no magic this run. No need for miracles. The gods frown upon such soul scrimpers. What are you doing? That's how I feel about you. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you liked it. Later, everybody.